طيب let's continue together lecture 20 okay in the previous uh, segment we have developed together the ergon equation and simplified it to a form that looks very easy and friendly طيب can we solve this can we integrate this analytically hmm well Apparently, we can do in a special case. If epsilon equals to zero, or if we can neglect epsilon times x with respect to one, we can obtain an analytical solution to the above equation for isothermal operation, where t over t naught equals to one. For isothermal operation with epsilon equals to zero, the pressure drop differential equation becomes very simple dy by dw equal minus alpha over 2y and you know how to integrate correct you know how to integrate just remember when you integrate your limit of integration is y equals to 1 meaning p equals to p naught at w equal to 0 so at the beginning of the bit where w equals to 0 p equals p naught therefore y equals to 1 So use that limit in your integration and you will get this equation. طيب. So now we have an equation for a case where epsilon equals to zero and where the operation is isothermal. Be sure not to use this equation if epsilon does not equal to one or if the reaction is not carried out isothermally. This equation can be used to substitute for the pressure in the rate law. in which case the mole balance can be written solely as a function of conversion and catalyst weight so remember you had dx by dw and it was function of x and p now you can remove p and substitute with p with this equation now it becomes instead of p you have a w now you can separate the variables and you can perform the integration the resulting equation can be can readily be solved either analytically or numerically furthermore if we wish to express p as a function of z we can use the w z relationship which we have shown previously and manipulate the above equation here instead of w we can express it in terms of z here we go tamam okay so let's take an example to have a feeling of all of these equations so calculating the pressure drop in a packed bed plot the pressure drop in a 60 feet length of one and a half inch schedule 40 pipe packed with catalyst spherical particles there is a 104.4 pound mass per hour of gas passing through the bed so this is the mass flow rate the temperature is constant along the length of the pipe at 260 celsius the void fraction is 45 percent and the properties of the gas are similar to those of air at this temperature the entering pressure is 10 atmospheres so p naught is 10 atmosphere additional information you have one inch one and a half inch schedule 40 pipe has an outer diameter of this much and wall thickness of this much okay and dp is given the particle size is given one over four inch that's this much foot uh, for air at 260 degrees celsius and 10 atmosphere the mu the viscosity is you can find it and also the density you can find it as well or you can calculate it from ideal gas flow طيب so we have the length of the pipe which is the same as length of the packing we have the mass flow rate we have the temperature the pressure at the entrance we have phi the void fraction the pipe inner diameter the cross section area we can calculate g as well which is the mass flux from the mass flow rate divided by the cross sectional area and obviously this is the superficial flux mass mass flux and dp is given gc we know it for air these are the properties of air at the entrance okay so 
let's use ergon equation. We say in this case, the temperature is constant. There is no reaction, so the total number of moles is not changing, so epsilon is zero. Therefore, we can integrate this equation analytically to get this equation. If you don't want p as a function of w, you can find or write p as a function of z. Okay, now we need to ask ourselves what should be the units of beta naught? Hmm. What should be the units of beta naught? Of course, the left hand side is dimensionless, the right hand side should be dimensionless. Dimensionless, this should be dimensionless. Therefore, yep, beta naught should have the units of pressure per length. Exactly. Okay, what is beta naught? Beta naught is given through this equation. So let's go ahead and calculate beta naught by substituting for all the parameters here. Okay, upon substitution, you can see that the first term here, which is dominant if you have a laminar flow, equals around 300. The second term here, which is dominant if you have a Turbulent flow is around 13,000. So it's very obvious that the flow is turbulent. Correct? Okay, so you can calculate again beta naught and you find it as pound force per cubic feet, but you want it as a pressure per length. So instead of pound feet per feet per feet square, you can write it as pound feet per feet per inch square. And Pound force, sorry, did I say pound feet? I should, I should say pound force. Um, pound force per inch square is PSI, right? Okay, so there we go. You can use some unit conversion to convert the pound force divided by cubic feet to pound force divided by inch square divided by one, one feet or one foot. And then we can convert the pound force, pound force here, and convert the pound force per inch square, which is PSI, can convert it to, there we go, see, can convert it to atmosphere, and then we get the value of beta naught and the units of pressure per foot. Okay, so now we can substitute in the above equation. And there we go. Now we can calculate P as a function of Z. And while at it, we can also calculate epsilon, the volumetric flow rate. And we can calculate epsilon as a function of z as well because we have an equation for this as a function of z. So now we have epsilon as a function of z as well. So let's do that. Let's uh, find uh, or establish a table where we vary the value of z from the beginning to the end of the pipe, 60 foot, and calculate p at the different locations and, uh, and calculate the volumetric flow rate at different locations as well. As you see that due to pressure drop, you lose actually around 75% of the pressure. The pressure at the beginning is 10 atmosphere, but at the end is around 2.7 atmosphere. So you lost three quarter of the pressure. How that affects the volumetric flow rate? The volumetric flow rate has increased from around 250 units to 1,000 units. That means it has increased by four, increased to, to four times, right? And of course, if the volumetric flow rate is increasing a lot, that means the concentration will decrease a lot, right? And therefore, decreasing the concentration will reduce for you the rate of reaction therefore reduce for you the obtained or the achievable conversion. Okay, here the, here the plot. You can see how pressure drops as you go down the length of the reactor. And you can as well see 
how the volumetric flow rate increases as you go down the length of the reactor through the bed. Right, with this, we reach the end of segment 2 of lecture 20. And we'll meet again in lecture 21. Have a great day.